At the beginning of the story, introduced a 19-year-old young man who has just been sentenced to six months in prison because he was caught stealing. This young man named Junior, he was put in an adult prison. After going through the examination process, Junior was delivered to his cell room, and as he walked past other cells, Junior looked nervous because there were many criminals, ranging from low class, middle class, to high class. Arriving at the cell room, the warden introduced his roommate named Ben, who the same age as Junior. But for some reason, Ben looked scared when he saw Junior. The next day, Junior's hair was shaved bald like the other inmates. Then he went to work in the prison shoe factory. It is known that the prisoners here still work and get a salary with different types of work, ranging from making shoes and making machines. While working, Junior saw a bald inmate who looked very fierce. He was known as Brendan, who was a notorious gangster and robber. At the same time, Junior saw Ben being forced taken by a prisoner named Dave. He and his men were targeting young people. However, Junior did not want to interfere with their affairs. He is more interested in getting close to Brendan so that he can become a prison master like him. Junior then approached Brendan who was playing chess. Here, Junior told him that he could beat Brendan in just three moves. And sure enough, he proved it right away. This also made Brendan upset, because he used to be a chess champion. But he was defeated by Junior, who was still young. Brendan also said that everyone in prison was a nobody and had nothing to fear, including Dave and his men. So, Junior just needs to serve his sentence and then be free in peace. Later that night, Junior wakes up to a noise in his room, as Ben is sharpening the tip of a toothbrush for self-defense. He was fed up with Dave and his men, bothering him almost every day. Hearing this, Junior began to feel sorry for Ben. The next day, Junior invited Ben to play wrestling, so that he and his roommate were put into isolation cells. The warden immediately moved Junior to solitary confinement, which was quite torturous, where the cell had no roof. So Junior can only hold to the scorching sun without a roof that is directly exposed to his head. Meanwhile, Ben was admitted to the prison hospital after receiving a pretty hard punch from Junior. A few days later, they were both released from their respective places and returned to their usual activities. Not long after, Brendan approached Junior and advised him not to make any more trouble, because basically he wouldn't be able to help anyone in prison. The fact is, now Ben is bullied again by Dave and his men. In the end, Ben couldn't take it anymore and decided to just move. Junior, who saw him on his deathbed, immediately contacted the officers. Unfortunately, the officers were unable to save Ben's life because the blood came out too much. Long story short, after Ben's death, Dave began to make Junior as his new target to be his desires. Not accepting this, Junior did the same thing like what Ben did. He tapered the tip of his toothbrush as a weapon of self-defense. On the other hand, Brendan began to see great potential in Junior, so he invited him to join his gang. As a result, Dave thinks again if he wants to bother Junior. Brendan then promised to make Junior a feared person in prison, with a condition, Junior must help him when he gets out of prison. The plan was that Brendan would commit a big robbery after being imprisoned for more than 20 years, and he was very confident that Junior could be a reliable partner. If Junior refuses the offer, Brendan won't help Junior when Dave harasses him. What's more, Dave had brutal friends in and out of prison. Brendan gave Junior one day to thinking his offer. The next day, Junior wanted to meet Brendan again. But suddenly Dave and his men dragged him to the toilet and forced him to fulling his desires. Fortunately, Brendan and his men came to save Junior. They beat Dave and his men mercilessly until they were battered. Next, Brendan ordered his men to finish off Dave by dropping him from the top floor. Since that incident, none of the inmates braved to touch Junior again. Over the past five months, Junior became a powerful figure and was feared by everyone because of Brendan's backing. Long story short, Junior was finally released from prison, and to keep his promise to Brendan, he did not immediately return to his hometown. He chose to send Brendan's letter to a mobster named Sam. Sam is a very powerful and feared monster in his area, because he controls 80% of the illegal business there. Coincidentally, Sam was playing chess here. He then asked Junior for advice who was very good at strategy. 
Sam was amazed by Junior's ability and immediately made him a member of his organization. But it seems that one of Sam's men, who is his nephew, who does not like Junior's presence. In addition, he was also given a place to live near beach with a view of girls' activity. Junior then opened the suitcase given by Sam, where there was a gun inside. Just as he wanted to try out the gun, a girl knocked on his door. Apparently, the girl just wanted to use the bathroom. It turned out that the girl was Sam's girl named Tasha. She was ordered to give money and cell phones to Junior. After play with Junior, she immediately gave instructions to Junior. After getting instructions, Junior immediately went to where the drug dealer and also was a weapons reseller. Here, Junior ordered weapons according to directions from Tasha, starting from Russian grenades and AUK-5. And as a purchase bonus, the reseller also provides free shooting practice so that Junior can use all these weapons. The next day, Junior was ordered go to the prison for get Brendan out of there. He then rented a helicopter. However, because he was going to do something illegal, Junior pointed a gun at the pilot so that the helicopter was directed to the prison. At the same time, Brendan was preparing to escape. He ordered his men to make a scene by holding a royal rumble inside the prison as distraction. Then he took one of the guards as hostage and threatened to kill him if the prison door was not opened. When the door was opened, Junior's helicopter entered the backyard. In order for Brendan and his men to board, Junior helped him to shoot at the guards with the skills taught by the drug dealer. Although he had only practiced once, Junior's shooting skills look quite good. Long story short, they went somewhere. But when they got there, Brendan suddenly beat one of his men, and it turned out that the man had lied to Brendan. Then they rested in a villa. Not long after, Brendan was greeted directly with a party made by Sam, while talking about the robbery plan mission that Brendan and his men had to do. Sam then tells Brendan that he has a plan to rob gold bars. While Sam and Brendan are talking about the robbery, Junior approaches Tasha, who is smoking behind the villa. But when Junior tries to flirt, Sam's nephew suddenly pushes him into the pool. And unfortunately, Junior can't swim. Seeing this, Tasha immediately jumped in to save him. Junior, who felt humiliated, finally chose to leave from there. However, on the way home, Tasha offered him a ride. Tasha then invited Junior to eat dumplings at a nearby Chinese stall. Here, the two began to like each other, especially since they are now in same ages. However, Junior wondered why Tasha didn't run away from Sam's house. In fact, she looks uncomfortable being a Sam's mistress. Tasha says that Sam will definitely kill her. Junior understood her feelings. The two of them then spend the night enjoying and laughing. The next day, Junior is scolded by Brendan, because he was caught approaching Tasha. Brendan said that Sam would be furious if he found out that a mistress was approached by his own men, and he would certainly kill if Cow Jr. was cheating with his women. Therefore, Brendan told Jr. to focus on the mission he was going to do. After that, Brendan invited Jr. to join his team. That's because they were monitoring the location of the robbery, where the mining company is very tightly guarded. Before the mission began, Brendan gave Jr. the task of using his weapon and if a guard approached their action, then he had to use and point the weapon. Later that evening, Brendan reiterated his plan. He also invited Sam to join him. But while he was explaining, Sam's nephew suddenly mocked Junior. Fed up with being belittled, Junior immediately challenged him in a fight. To calm himself down, Junior chooses to left and to a bar. But instead of being entertained, he then saw Tasha being harassed by the villains. Without further ado, he immediately pulled out a gun to scare them out. Apparently, Tasha didn't like Junior's actions, because it could provoke the police to come. Junior apologized and promised not to do that again. He then invited Tasha to have a cup together, but Tasha preferred to play at the beach. There, Tasha wanted to teach Junior how to swim, but they got carried away and ended up with in love activity. The next morning, Tasha gives him her necklace, Later, Junior promises that he will bring the looted gold and save Tasha from Sam's clutches. Not long after that, Junior joined Brendan and his team to carry out the robbery according to the agreed plan. Brendan and his men disguised themselves as electricity officers in order to enter through the company's front gate. After getting in, Brendan immediately broke the air ducts in the building. 
Brendan then told Junior to sneak in through the broken vent. But unfortunately, Junior accidentally dropped his flashlight. He also looked very panicked being caught. But as his friend, Brendan tried to calm Junior down so that his plan would not fail. Elsewhere, Tasha is seen with Sam. Here it is revealed that Tasha has been assigned to test Junior's loyalty. She also reported to Sam that Junior intended to betray him. She tells the truth, even so confident and feel that Junior will get away from Sam. A few hours later, the robbery finally began. As Junior prepared to ventilate, Brendan and his team made a reckless move by breaking into the CCTV control room and taking down the guards. After that, Brendan disconnected several networks in the building and at the same time, Junior went into action wearing a monkey mask. He came down from the vents and beat up the workers there. Brendan and his team then entered and took all the workers as hostage while searching for the gold. The robbery action went smoothly at first, but Sam's nephew became a liability to the team. That's because he shot one of the hostages, even though Brendan's plan was only to rob, not hurt people. Brendan told him to plug and cover the blood coming out of the gunshot wound with a cloth. At the same time, there were some policemen who came to the mine site. So, Brendan inevitably had to change his plan. The plan Brendan was referring to was a shootout with the police. After grabbing all the gold bar, they immediately became brutal and shot at all the police that ran away as fast as they could. They chased each other. Until finally, Brendan and his team could escape. But unfortunately, one of Brendan's men was shot in the stomach until his left kidney leaked, and it seemed that he would not last much longer. Without lingering any longer, they immediately met Sam in a place. Here Brendan was furious because of Sam's nephew, his plan had gone awry and mess, and now he's already been caught by the police, especially since one of his men is now dead. Sam is also sorry for his death. After that, Sam tells Brendan and Junior to burn the car and all the evidence of the robbery, including the bodies of his dead men. At the same time, Tasha is seen packing her belonging as she intends to run away with Junior. But unfortunately, Sam had expected this. Sam then sent one of his executioners to finish Tasha off. However, Tasha didn't want to just give up. She hits the executioner's head with an iron and leaves as quickly as possible. Not only Tasha and Junior, Brendan is also trapped by Sam, who wants to control all the gold. Brendan also took Junior to a cemetery, then dug up one of the graves. Apparently, Brendan keeps his money in that place. He intends to go to Melbourne, because Sam will sell his gold there. Before leaving to Melbourne, Junior sends Tasha a train ticket so that she can come and join too. On the way, Sam focused on drinking coffee and enjoying the scenery. Junior and Tasha were busy with their business. Arriving at the destination, Brendan meets his acquaintance there to ask for information regarding the sale of gold. Apparently what Sam is going to do is to negotiate with the Russian Mafia. Later that night, Brendan, Junior, and Tasha see the news on television where they have become wanted fugitives. Brendan then gives Tasha an envelope of money to give to the wife of his dead men. However, Tasha does not want to be told. An emotional Brendan then slapped her on the spot, and of course this makes Junior angry. He did not accept that his new lover was hurt by Brendan, until finally the fistfight ensued. In the end, they decided to reconcile. While waiting for Tasha to buy food, Brendan suggested that Junior should leave Tasha, because she could be a burden to him. But unfortunately, Tasha heard about it. She immediately runs away, for fear of being killed by Brendan and Junior. Junior pursues her and tries to straighten out the problem, that he never intended to get rid of Tasha, even though Brendan would pay dearly. Instead, he still wanted to carry out his original plan, where he ran away with Tasha. However, Tasha was already disappointed and chose to leave. Before that, she told Junior that Brendan only wanted to use him. On the other hand, Brendan who was eating his food was suddenly held at gunpoint from behind. Apparently, the person who pointed the gun at him was Sam's fellow alliance. He was sent to finish off Brendan. But Brendan actually invited him to work together and promised to give the proceeds from the sale of gold. Meanwhile, Junior is upset about being left by Tasha. He sends her a voice message and wants to see her again. The next morning, Junior was awakened by Brendan while pointing a gun. 
Instantly, Junior was shocked. He thought that Brendan wanted to kill him. But it turned out that Brendan just wanted to surprise him because it was Junior's birthday. The man then gave the gun as a gift. After that, Brendan invited Junior to disrupt the gold transaction between Sam and his team and the Russian Mafia. But unfortunately, Sam didn't show up at the location. He only sent his nephew and executioner. Brendan and Junior then watched them from afar. And when the transaction was in progress, suddenly a car wanted to hit them. Because of this, the Russian Mafia thought Sam's men wanted to thwart the deal. As a result, they shoot each other. Then this is where Brendan appears to finish them all off. Then, Brendan and his team took Sam's surviving nephew to a closed place. They then tortured him until he opened his mouth about the location of the gold. But because he didn't want to open his mouth, Brendan finally decided to put him in the refrigerator. When Sam's nephew was so cold that he was tortured, Brendan asked him again about the gold. Reluctantly, Sam's nephew immediately told him the place. Brendan and Junior opened the suitcase shown by Sam's nephew, which turned out to contain real gold. After getting the gold, Brendan and Junior returned to Sam's place. Of course, they weren't there to meet Sam, but to get revenge. Without much ado, Brendan shoots Sam's monster to a badly death. They then rested in a hotel while waiting for the situation to become safe. Then, the two of them bought a boat to escape overseas. According to the seller, the ship had been used to sail to Australia. Long story short, they set sail on the ship. However, in the middle of the voyage, Brendan and Junior argued again. This time, Junior was very disappointed with his mentor, who had been using him. In fact, he always considered Brendan as a sincere teacher. Here it is also finally revealed that Junior has moved all his gold to another place. Instantly, Brendan was furious and immediately pointed his gun. But at the same time, a call comes in from Tasha. Apparently, Junior and Tasha had planned this trap since they were still in Melbourne. Brendan, who was upset, immediately pushed Junior into the sea. He forgot that Junior couldn't swim. Even though he was upset, Brendan had no intention of killing him. After all, Junior was his best student. Then Brendan helped Junior and lifted him back onto the ship. In the end, they got back to being good relation as usual. Brendan also had no problem if Junior and Tasha wanted to take some of the gold. However, when Junior had left, Brendan was surrounded by special forces who had been targeting him since his escape from prison. At the end of the story, Junior and Tasha live happily as a couple. As for Brendan, he was again sentenced to 20 years in prison. But one day, he got a letter from Junior. And in the letter Junior told Brendan's gold rations he had hidden in a grave. Because after all, Brendan had teached Junior to be a brave person. Together with the information that Brendan got, the movie ended.